or POM seed. What is POM seed? Pro opio melanocortin. It's a it's a gene in mammals that that is really what we specialize in. And it turns out what translates POM seed from our DNA? UV lights the stimulus. Where does that light come from? Most people think that it's from uh, the sun. I'm going to tell you, in the original animals that first come out, it's not only from the sun, but it's also from the ultra-weak biophotons that they make, which tends to be in the ultra-weak um, spectrum, which is 200 to 400. How do we know that? Because everything that is about a mammal, which is the leptin melanocortin pathway, and then this hemoglobin story with the inner mitochondrial membrane becomes sculpted. That's where you have NAD to oxygen. What's the, the, the change there? Negative 400 to positive 400 volts. But what's the other thing? What's the emission and absorption spectra of cytochrome 1? Turns out it absorbs at 340, and it emits in the blue range, in the flavin range. That's why the second cytochrome is a blue absorber. It also turns out that it makes the most superoxide pulse in all of the mitochondria, which, what are free radicals? Remember, they're unpaired electrons. What does that mean? It means they all have absorption and emission spectra. So the other problem in biochemistry we haven't got to, but I did sit down with a famous biochemist probably 10 or 15 years ago that you probably have heard of, Ray Pete. And hmm. I, I did tell him this story and his eyes were glazed over. When he told me all the things he said, I said, Ray, I said, do you understand that anything that has an absorption and emission spectrum means that light has to be part of the story. And I told him how old the story went. I said, do you know who came up with this idea originally? I said it was a um, guy who also won a Nobel Prize for being wrong about the Krebs cycle, which was Albert St. Georgie. And he said the most interesting thing at a meeting in 1941 in Budapest, he said, the only thing that DNA codes for is proteins. And he goes, it's really funny when you look at a protein, they have an electronic structure that mimics a semiconductor. Do you know who was sitting in the audience that day? Robert O. Becker. Hmm. Literally, within less than two decades, he proves that Albert St. George is correct. Okay? And he, but beyond a shadow of a doubt. So when I gave the story to Ray, I said, Ray, all the things that you believe are based on this paradigm of you learning about all these boxcars but as you said, Nick, in the beginning of this podcast, you're like, Jack, it's not clear to me how the two domains of life came together, which is now you're asking me the next question, which is beautiful, because I know you're understanding what I'm saying now. So let's talk about what happened to these mammals. <laughs> Turned out these mammals went from being hypoxic to TCA masters with oxygen. And what did that mean at the mitochondrial level? That means they made chemicals and selected for chemicals at a quantum biologic level, not at Darwin's level, that had emission spectra that were all in the UV range. Mm -hmm. And now if That's the switch happens, happened. if the switch happens, you now have the energetic potential to build more and bigger complexity. You got it. And that's exactly what the story of E equals MC squared is. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to teach you about that because, you know, energy and mass and Einstein's equation are the same. So the thing is, if you're able to have more energy in the system, which is what Pirogene's theorem is, he won the Nobel Prize in 77. Basically, a, a cell is a quantum uh, cell that's designed to pump light into it. And what do we do? Through electrical resistance, photoelectrical resistance, that's how you build the complexity. So what are you doing? The electrical resistance of things in a cell slows the light down. Those things harvest the power, and then we build the complexity from that. It's no different than the story I told you about what happens to a baby when it's inside its mother, okay? It's exact same story. It's another fractal of the story. And when you see it for yourself, you start to look at biochemistry. You start opening up your Leninger biochemistry and go, Jesus Christ, I never learned anything about absorption and emission spectra. And this is the reason why, Nick, I'm such a pain in the ass for guys like you that are in evolutionary biology and biochemistry, because I keep pointing out these key features that you're forgetting and you guys know a lot of this stuff I know. You know about the GOE. You know about the Cambrian explosion. You know about Darwin and how the story doesn't marry up to the Cambrian explosion. But because it's central dogma, nobody wants to question it. Why? Because if you're a PhD, you'll never get any money from the NIH or from DARPA or for anybody else. And I understand that. But remember, we're doing this podcast 
not to talk about how centralized science went off the rails. We're actually trying to teach people the story of life.